Twenty third is what? That's during spring break. That's when we get close to Okay, the does anybody have homework questions? I sent it to my parents so they could read it. So I figured that was gonna happen. They said that there was also a non confirmed case here. So. Well we're going to be working on four point two. We've been looking at the art gallery theorem, which is a area of mathematics that comes under computational geometry. So where we look at computational geometry is the mathematics of geometry. How to do efficiently anything that is computing with geometry. So we're just looking at that area through this one theorem, the art gallery theorem. So this would be section, which one? 4. 4.2. 4.2 4 continued. So we were using Steve Fisk's um, proof of the theorem to triangulate our, our, our polygonal closed curves. The life lesson here was that often in life, hard questions have answers that are made up of many easy pieces. So Steve Fisk realized that if you have triangles, any corner of the triangle can see the entire triangle. So a person standing at any corner of the triangle can see the whole triangle. And that way, we can cut up polygonal closed curves into triangles and just concentrate on the corners. So we cut them up into triangles, being careful, remember, not to cross lines. No crossing the lines as you draw your lines inside, and um, only corner to corner. Do not connect in the middle of a line segment. Only go from one corner to another, or vertice to vertice. So in that way, we are able to color every triangle corners so that it has a red, a white, or a blue corner. You need to have all three colors on each triangle, and that will be something that I check on quizzes. Well, let's go ahead and do that with this problem in the bottom right, this polygonal closed curve. I think this one is a good example of needing to be really careful to make all the triangles there are. So here, for example, we connect corner to corner. We don't connect into the middle of the line segment, only corner to corner. I'll do that over here. And I'll go ahead, always going corner to corner, never into the middle of a line segment. And now I can connect. We want to keep doing this till we only have triangle shapes. And I pointed out before that if you're not quite sure you have a triangle, draw more then. Connect corner to corner to draw more. So for example, up here, this is not a straight line. So I don't actually have a triangle here. That's OK. Just make a whole bunch of triangles. Connect corner to corner to make a bunch of triangles. Never crossing lines as you draw your lines. And never connecting anywhere except a corner to a corner. Otherwise, you introduce extra corners. And we're not supposed to do that for this uh, theorem to be true. <clears throat> now, the problem I find most often is students have a hard time making sure they only have a red, a white, and a blue on each triangle. Sometimes students put two reds on a triangle or two whites on a triangle. The way to avoid that is start out whichever triangle you want. So I'm going to do red, white, and blue here. But once you've started, you've drawn two corners. You've colored two corners on another triangle. So the red and white color this triangle at the bottom. That means that's the triangle you have to do next. Whichever triangle now has two corners colored has to be the next triangle. So I have red and white. That means this corner is blue. 
Now I don't go up and do this triangle. I do the one that I have two corners already colored. So I go to the triangle I have white and blue on and I make that corner red over here. Now I have a triangle with red and blue, so I make the other corner white. Now I have a triangle with red and white, so I make the other corner blue. Um, also I created a triangle that has white and blue, so I make the other corner red. And continue like that. You're always going to have a triangle with two corners colored. That's the one to do next, not the one that just has one corner colored. Go to the triangle that has two corners colored. So red and blue, pick white. White and blue, pick red, and so on. So we're looking for where we would place security guards. So we want to see how many vertices we have here. Put a little point where you start counting so you don't get goofed up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 vertices. The art gallery theorem says that we could take 12 divided by 3 or four, and they have at most four security guards. And again, that's because we're dividing up all the vertices, the 12 vertices, among three different colors. And one color set will be enough to watch the entire art gallery. Let's see what we have for red, white, and blue vertices. So here, um, red, one, two, three, four red. White, one, two, three, four white. Blue, or blue. That doesn't always happen. Uh, sometimes there's different ways you can you can have these colors like maybe uh, five and four and three. Okay. So whichever one is the least is what you pick. For example, up here I picked blue. I could have picked red to place the uh, cameras. Since they're all the same, it doesn't matter. Since there's four security guards, no matter which color I pick, I can pick any color I want. I'm just going to pick blue because those look the easiest to draw circles around. Do be sure to draw circles around where your security cameras go, or your um, guards. And then the idea then, we have that the place that you placed your security guard can see every single triangle that they're touching. So this security guard can see a lot of triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. Um, the security guard up here can only see this triangle and a little bit more, but basically they're in charge of the one triangle. Yes? yes. Um, because they're all four, do you just pick one of them then? Yes. When they're all the same color, just pick one. I'm sorry. When they're all the same number, just pick one okay. randomly. Or if you have two the same number, pick one of those randomly. Okay. So I'd like you to try the other two on your own. And I'd like to make sure when we come around to see that you're getting a different color, three different colors on each triangle. And also, where do you place the security guard? There is more than one way to do this. So. Um, if yours is, ends up being a little different than mine, that's okay. But make sure if you are stuck, you get help from Nicholas or myself, and we'll come around and give you a hand. Now, some of you were missing on Monday, so if that's the case, I have some extra ones here, or if you just forgot yours at home. Does anybody need an extra?
And my mom goes, wow, with a whole bunch of emojis. Hannah looked though, she's like, what, really, you're closing down too? Like, apparently. Well, we will on after Lala's class on Friday. Wait. Email. We're officially shutting down. Check your email. Yeah. It's a little confusing. Yeah, we're going to be doing, the, we're just going to be staying extra for spring break. It's online. It's all online classes pretty much now. Oh, no. You mean your theater class? You're an acting class. Webcam. Oh, okay. But these two are on the end. Yeah, can we do this one? This one is actually pretty easy. Oh, wait, yeah. I should have made the email oh, okay. easier to read. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then Yeah. Yeah. Blue. Yeah. Um, and you, you, um, this is the corner, 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 yeah. And you put it to the line. So we determine which one, okay. And then, um, for these ones, is it, so is it, we're trying to find the least amount of that. There, that's better. So, one, two, because this one can see everything, this one, and this one can figure it out. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. just, yeah. just by determination, like, the one with the lowest the one with the lowest will be higher. Okay. And then, put that close to the short version. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have them up here, too. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So now, I'll talk to Done. That. Yay! Okay, and um, so this looks good triangulating, and then where did you end up putting your circles? Oh, I haven't done that yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just did the color. Okay. Can you have your circles? Okay. Okay, if you're stuck, raise your hand, okay? This is the closet to the so here. This is the class activity. This this is the class activity. So when you get yours done, put your sheet up. Now when I come around, I'm going to be checking to make sure when I take your quiz and um, correct your quiz, I'll be checking to make sure you didn't put two colors on on. Th that you have all three colors on each triangle and I'll also be checking to make sure you didn't connect mid line okay so if you if you went straight across here and connected a point here that would be incorrect okay you have to go right to the corner corner to corner so that's the other thing I checked only connecting the corner so this one should have been drawn here oh I did that right so here's some possible ways you could have done this on um, the bottom left here I ended up with two cameras on white for I keep calling them cameras they can be cameras or guards four red and three blue so since I had two I picked the two but some of you did this a little differently so you had three three and three did anybody have three three and three that's fine too if you have three, three, and three, then it doesn't matter which color you pick. Just so you pick one color, like here I picked white over here, and you circle all the white ones. 
So make sure you circle where your security cameras go as your final step. So this is a very typical quiz question. You will see something like this on your quiz. If it didn't work out for you, make sure you see myself or a tutor and we'll go over it together, okay? And it's your 4.2 class activity. <coughs> Does anybody have questions on this? So we're looking at uh, the idea of using the least amount of security guards in a polygonal closed curve. This idea actually gives rise to another idea. So this is the last page in this section in your text. And what we see is, what if your gallery had mirrored walls? You ever been in a house of mirrors? <laughs> mirrors everywhere? If you're in a gallery with mirrored walls, then you could put a candle way down here, and the light from the candle would, and the image from the candle would bounce off the mirrored walls until it reached your eye. So if you were standing right here, you could still see the image of the, of the candle through the bouncing images on the mirrors. Well, this brings up the question, how many, how many people need to be present? How many security guards do you need to be present if you have a mirrored gallery? And so that's this blue box. This blue box asks the question, Visibility within a house of mirrors. For an arbitrary polygonal closed curve having mirrored sides, must there exist a point from which every point inside the polygon curve is visible? So we see some examples here of polygonal closed curves where every single point is visible from the point where the eyeball is drawn. Well, I guess that's supposed to be a camera. So even way down here in this corner, the image in this bottom corner reflects off the mirrors and bounces into this camera. So far, nobody has found a polygonal closed curve where you cannot place a security guard camera and see every single point inside. So just one point inside of a mirrored polygonal closed curve art gallery will be able to see every single point so far, but that's an open question because we don't know, is that true for every polygonal closed curve with mirrors or just the ones people have studied so far? So if this is something that's interesting to you, you can spend some time studying it. I always think it's kind of fun to have something you just have to prove wrong and then you've done something cool nobody else could do. So if you spend time drawing polygonal closed curves and looking at their reflections and can find one where there's not a single point that can view every part of the polygonal closed curve, you'll have proved an uh, outstanding question in mathematics. We're going to go on then and take a look at our next section in this geometry that we're looking at in chapter 4. So we're in now in section 4.4. Um, boy, I sure can't keep the section numbers straight here. We're going into section 4.3. Has anybody heard of the golden rectangle before? Your author calls it the sexiest rectangle. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to let you pick which one you think is the most attractive of all the rectangles on the list here. These are some rectangles your author provides, and I also put a square on there because some people like squares best. And I'm going to ask you to vote. So this, th there's no right answer here, okay? It's not like one is correct. I want you to tell me which one speaks to you, which one makes your heart soft. <laughs> All right. Which one do you like best? No, <laughs> no. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> we don't want the loudest voice to prevail. We want everybody's to vote. And then I'll and then I'll ask you to write it down. Okay. Um, and then I'll take a vote. Okay. 
All right. Now, okay, who voted for A? Okay, we got one, one A. Okay. Who voted for B? One B. Okay. Who voted for C? One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I see seven C. Who voted for D? One, two, three Ds. Who voted for E? One, two Ds. Okay, thank you. So this was um, subjective. And what we're considering here isn't how big the rectangle is or whether it stood on its short side or its long side. We're considering the proportions. When we look at the size of a rectangle, the way it makes us feel inside has to do with its ratio of its long side to its short side. So we're going to examine the ratios of all of these and you can see which ones were preferable to you. And again, there's no right answer here. So you'll need a ruler for this section. Hopefully you remembered to bring one. Uh, the first one, as I told you, is square. So when you take its ratio of long side to short side, it's really the same. 2.5 to 2.5, and the ratio there is 1, meaning the sides are the same length. If we look at B, you're going to have to do this in a bit with some other pictures. It's nicest to use centimeters, I think, with this. Then you don't have to deal with fraction, fraction portions. So we have 2.8, 2 2.7, 2 uh, 28 divided by 7 is 4, so 2.8 divided by 7.7 .7 is 4. So that means this B is four times as long as it is tall. So some of you like that feeling better, at least for a um, page full of rectangles. Uh, here we have 2.8 wide, 1.8 tall. What does that come out to? So I'm just putting that in my calculator. 2.8 divided by 1.8. We have 1.56. So that was C. And now I'm looking at D. D is 1.2 to 2.5. So 2.5 divided by 1.2. So a little more than twice as tall as it is wide. So we put the long side divided by the short side. And one more E. E is 3.2 divided by 1.4. 3.2 divided by 1.4. 2.29. So some of you prefer a wider, a bigger ratio, much wider compared to its height. Um, the class as a whole preferred C the most. C is closest to what's called the golden ratio. So we're going to be talking about the golden ratio today. Now we talked about the golden ratio before. I'm not sure I actually use those words. Anybody remember where we talked about the golden ratio before? Maybe I didn't call it that. Okay, who remembers what this is? Yay, that's good. The Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five, eight. 
8, 13, 21, 34. And we made a ratio of the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. We took the second number, divided by the first number. So 1 over 1 is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 3 over 2 is 1.5, 5 over 3 is 1 and 2 thirds, so 1.67, 8 over 5, 1.6, and so on. And as we kept going, taking each successive number and dividing it by the number before, we were approaching a value called phi. So phi was the number that you could write as a continued fraction of ones. Whoops, I got an extra plus sign. Let's fix that up. So phi was the number that you could write as an infinite continued fraction of ones. And that led us to describe phi inside of itself. So you have phi with phi inside of itself. So phi was the number that you could write as 1 plus 1 over itself. And that gave us a way to find a numeric value for phi, a more exact value than 1.6. So phi came out to be 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And that, of course, was about 1.6. So any rectangle, any rectangle whose ratio of long side to short side any rectangle whose ratio of long side to short side comes out to equal phi is a golden rectangle. So golden rectangles have had an appeal for many people over the centuries, including artists and architects. Our life lesson in this section is to take Take ideas from one domain and explore them in another. So we're exploring a math idea of a golden ratio in the world of art. So the Parthenon has some areas of golden rectangles. Now, now remember from our list of rectangles, when you look for a rectangle this, this one C was the one that was closest to a golden rectangle. It came out to a proportion of 1.56, the closest that we have. So when you look for a golden rectangle, it shouldn't be square. That's going to have a ratio of 1 to 1, 1 about. And um, this is a, a little too big. These both were a little too big compared to a golden rectangle. So a golden rectangle is a little more than 1 and a half times as wide as it is tall. So let's watch for those in these artworks that we see. Um, we'll look at the Parthenon a little more in some handouts, and you'll see some golden rectangles there. Uh, here's some ancient art, um, what do we call this, a chalice? A beautiful bowl <laughs> with handles? <laughs> but it has a golden rectangle in it right through here. I'll bring you out some Leon some of Leonardo da Vinci's work in a little bit, and we see lots of golden rectangles there because Leonardo da Vinci loved math besides art. But we see other artists as well. So here we have Seurat's artwork re, um, covered up with some rectangles which are golden. And we see golden rectangles in architecture as well. Have you ever walked into a rectangular room that didn't feel comfortable because of its proportions? Well, it might be that it was too far away from being a golden rectangle. So we have the United Nations building with some golden rectangles in it and some other buildings with some golden rectangles in them. So I'm going to ask you to do this measuring that I did earlier here where I found the long side divided by the short side on some artwork and find some golden rectangles there. 
Nicholas, do you want to hand these out and try and make sure everybody gets one? I'll put a few on the overhead. Thank you. So if you can get different kinds of people next to, for people next to each other so they can look at multiple examples. So we here have some work by Mondrian. Um, here we have some work by Leonardo da Vinci. I also have some pictures of the Parthenon. Let's see if I can get as much in here as I can. Online students, you can find these by Googling modern, um, you don't have to do modern art. You can Google the golden rectangle in art and you'll see these images and you can take out your ruler and measure. So what I'd like you to do is to find rectangles in here that are golden. I'm going to ask for an image from each of these which ones are golden, okay? So go ahead and find one and measure it with your ruler. Take the ratio of the short side to the long side. I have two extra rulers. I'm gonna try and get a ruler um, for every two people. Well, okay. <laughs> Hopefully people, you can share it. Does anybody in the back row, do you need a ruler back? Well, Who's not next to someone with a ruler or having a ruler themselves? I have an ID card. Oh, well, that doesn't have measurements on here. Thank you. So if you're working with someone, you can have them measure and you write yeah. down. Okay, you don't have to do a, you don't have to do everything. You can have someone measure and you write down the measurements. Thank you, Nicholas. Does anybody want a particular picture? Because I have a few extras here. Okay, so find the golden rectangle. If you get between 1.5 and 1.7, one the, the artist was try, probably trying like, for a golden rectangle, but without limited um, measuring devices and the thickness okay. of the line. So you pick something yeah. up here that's yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah. like it could be a golden rectangle. this is not the one. I got one. I haven't. Yeah, 1.14 is so, this one. Yeah. So, um, so this is going to be the same. So you don't, if you can, please don't write on the papers if you already did. Okay, that's all right. But uh, I do use these colors. Two days. <laughs>
Not yet. So what am I doing? Like, 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 what am I doing? There you go. Perfect name. Just under one cent. Over one cent. Can I put this one on one of them? I found. I'm three. 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 I'
Did anybody have this pic picture? Oh, I did. I couldn't find anything. Nothing on that one yet you could find? Not that I could. Did anybody find any on that one? Okay. Again, if you find something between 1.5 and 1.7 with our measuring techniques and our, um, that's probably what the artist was intending. How about on this one? Anybody find any there? I did. What did um, you find? Lisa's head. There's a golden box around her head. So there's a golden the rectangle exactly around her box. Exactly 1.6. Exactly 1.6 there. Okay, good. And how about this one? I didn't even get to that one. <laughs> did anybody find one on this one? Yep. Which one? The big rectangle. The big rectangle is a golden rectangle? Oh, uh, yeah. It's about 1.6. 1.6. Okay, good. Okay, well, thank you for looking at these. What we're going to do in this class in this section is to recognize a golden rectangle and to be able to draw a golden rectangle. So here's where you'll need your compass and your straight edge and graph paper. If you don't have graph paper, then please take out a piece of paper and make a temporary ruler. Remember how I showed you to do that? Okay, because you're gonna need squares and you can't have a square unless you have some way to compare <laughs> lengths of sides. So I'm going to ask um, Nicholas to please distribute again so that everybody, every two people need a compass. It'd be nice if everybody had a compass, but we can share, okay? Thank you. And if you need a sharpener, here's a sharpener. You can have the sharpener too in case you need a sharpener. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Take out some. Gra oh, we're taking compasses. Whenever we have a compass, I think of this poem. How many of you have seen this poem before? No. Have you? Yeah. What is it? A Valediction Forbidding Morning by John Don. Okay, so this is this is a poem about a compass. And we're looking at math in different areas. And so I thought poetry was a different area. So this is um, John Doan writing about two lovers who are like a compass, the two ends of a compass, okay? So I'll read this to you. <laughs> Our two souls, therefore, which are one, though I must go, endure not yet a breach, but an expansion, like gold to airy thinness beat. If they be two, they are two, so as stiff twin compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show to move, but doth if the other do. And though it in the center sit, yet when the other far doth roam, it leans and hearkens after it, and grows erect as it doth come home. Such wilt thou be to me, who must like the other foot obliquely run, Thy firmness makes my circle just and makes me end where I begun. Now, isn't that the most beautiful poem ever? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to learn to make a golden rectangle. So you start with a square. So on a piece of graph paper, we draw a square. Your quizzes will have graph paper on this portion. We're going to construct a golden rectangle. This is, ah, I can't keep this section number in mind. Are we in 4.3? Thank you. This is actually a class activity, so we want to make sure we get this. Okay. Plus, it's going to be on a quiz, so there's another reason to be sure you need it. And I lent out my ruler. Can I please have a ruler back? <laughs> Your time. Thank you. Your straight edge will be um, yep. fine for this. Sounds good. Or actually, you might need your homemade ruler because you, oh, you have graph paper, so you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, make a square. I'm going to make mine four by, I, I'm rather eight, eight by eight. You can make it six by six or four by four. I suggest an even number, okay? Four, four units by four units, eight by eight, six by six. Mine's eight by eight. So that's the first step. One, make a square. So number one, we all have to have a square to start with. 
An even number of units works best. And then number two, we're going to mark a point in the middle bottom called M. Okay? So the bottom middle Thank you. The bottom at middle is the point M. So you've got this nice square going. You label the bottom middle with an M. Then the top right corner will label C. The top right corner equals C. So we need this length, the length between M and C. So we need M on the bottom middle of your square. We need C in the upper right corner of the square. That's when you take out your compass. Okay, so I do know if you use a compass or not. If you do not have a compass, borrow one for the quiz, because I can tell. Okay, so you put one point there, one point there. So put your, put your fixed point on the M and your marking portion, your pencil, on the C. Stab your point into the M. Well, you don't have to be violent, but okay. There, and then... The better you can make this, the better it is. Okay, then make an arc. Okay, so don't send me drawings that don't have an arc. Borrow a compass and make an arc. So draw an arc from M to C. That's the length that we need, and that's what a compass is used for, to make a length, to transfer a length. So um, you want it to go down past the bottom of your box, past the bottom of your square. So since some of you are sharing a compass, I'll give you a chance to all get that marked off. <laughs> so that's the length that we need, that compass length. And I do look for it on a quiz, and I do look and measure it if it looks like it's not a really a compass mark. I will take out my own compass and compare. Nicholas, can you take this one around and help people? I think there's um, some over there that didn't get a chance to use it yet. Thank you. Over there, in the front. So once you have your compass mark drawn, that tells you how wide your golden rectangle needs to be. So we extend the base of our golden rectangle over until it reaches the compass mark. That's what that arc is for. Thank you, Count Nicholas. <laughs> so once you've extended your base over to that length that the compass marked out, then you can draw a vertical line at that length as well. <laughs> So the compass reaches between M and C, right? And then you sweep the compass over. Thank you. Okay. So let's write down that we just did that, okay? We did number four, mark, mark arc MC, mark the arc MC. Number five, extend the base. to the arc. Okay, that's how we get our length for our rectangle. And by the way, we put M on the bottom. If you use two other corners for M and C, then you get a vertical golden rectangle. Last of all, let's check. Oh, well, we could finish drawing. Finish drawing the rectangle.
and then check. So take out your ruler if you still have your ruler and check. So mine comes out to 8.2 for the long side. And 5.1 for the short side. And if you come up between 1.5 and 1.7, then you're doing good, okay? Mine comes out to 1.61. So that is how you make a golden rectangle using a square to start with. We're going to look at other, another way to make a golden rectangle on Friday. Um, so you'll still need your graph paper, compass, and ruler again. This is the one that's requested though for the 4.3 activity. So please go ahead and put your name placard out again today and get your 4.3 activity submitted. If yours didn't come out or you're not sure on any steps, then ask Nicholas or I for help so that you can make sure you have this right because it's worth anything you have to practice is worth a lot of points on a quiz so this will be worth quite a few points on the next quiz I'll see you on Friday it's up here oh, it's right